Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map we're going to be exploring is GM Canada Forest, or just Canada, as the workshop page states. This map has actually been suggested a number of times in the past, but it's only now I've had a chance to look at the workshop page, and as soon as I did, I knew I had to check it out. See, what we're looking at right here is the road into Breswick, Ontario, a town which in the 80s was home to a coal power plant, and the emissions and all kinds of dumping and other pollution caused by that plant slowly poisoned the residents, causing all kinds of sicknesses and eventually, when it was discovered, forcing the town to be completely abandoned. As you can see, the area was sealed off, and this is how it sat for 30 years. It's only recently that efforts are underway to try and clean up the area and restore some measure of livability, which is why we have the image we see before us. Look, this cracked and overgrown road, abandoned cars littering it, and yet those streetlights flicker on. This is such a weird and creepy image, and it's so cool that it actually has a story to go along with it. Something that should not exist, but due to circumstances, here we are. Now, as you can see, this is mostly forest, but a fallen tree has enabled us one last chance to explore this place before the cleanup is complete. So, I guess we just pick a direction and start walking. Wait, no, no, no. I'm actually going to talk about this a little bit more, because this is such a cool image. But it's one I hadn't even thought about until I saw it. A single lit street light over what's barely even recognizable as a road anymore until you see the street light and look. Ah. <laughs> Imagine being the explorers who might have been walking down this thing when the project started to power it up and the lights came on. It's just such a ghostly thing. I wonder if there's anywhere that's actually kind of like this in real life. Maybe disused sections of road where the power is still connected? And so every night the streetlights still come on. Ooh. There's a building right here, and what looks like some power lines in the fog. It's actually got kind of a weird, like, purple fog going on here. A strange haze that suggests this is either just before daybreak or just after sunset. Let's see what's going on in here. Ooh. I can hear the rattle from this machinery. Looks like some kind of power infrastructure, but... This place looks like it being on is more a side effect than something intentional. What is that thing? Huh. Despite the noise from the equipment, I highly doubt the power that's coming through here is being produced here. So I really have to wonder if a place like this can still be working and still connected to the grid as soon as it's given some juice. Maybe that means the entire town is lit up as well. Oh, that's such a scary thought. I can't wait to see what the actual town is like. But, uh, it looks like others have explored this before! and apparently didn't do a very good job with this. Uh, I could no-clip, but I think I saw some ladders outside. Where are those? Uh, yes, right here. Yep. Maybe from up here we can get a better view. Oh, there's not all that much to see. We actually can't make our way down here. It's too narrow, I guess.
Well, let's see what we can see, I suppose. <laughs> Nothing but a whole lot of fog and trees. Looks like I'm still on my own. In order to give myself some sense of direction, I think maybe I'll just take the road back. Actually, this vehicle doesn't look like it's been sitting here for 30 years. It actually looks like maybe it's part of the restoration. Maybe came out here to survey what kind of state this place is in. Yeah, no, they actually are producing from here, look! A gas can? This thing is rattling like crazy! I think this place had the infrastructure, and although it seems wildly unsafe to do so, they just powered it up from here. Alright, well, let's see what the rest of this place is like. Hmm, there's a dirt path right here, actually. One which they've chosen to illuminate with floodlights. So, yeah. Uh, perhaps this is some kind of base camp related to the cleanup project? Yeah, there's a trailer right here. Maybe for some kind of site advisors while surveying is being done. Ooh, there's something else over here. Is this also related to power infrastructure? No. This actually looks like a wood building. Oh. Scratch that. Lumber. Well, I suppose I was still correct. Yeah, it's some kind of lumber plant. But it looks like it's being used as a base by the cleanup. Those candles sort of suggest that uh, the first people to come in here didn't have the benefit of floodlights. Also, I'm going to do a little bit of a nerd thing here and appreciate this, because I've been doing a little mapping myself, and I now know what kind of work goes into this. I love how on this, I guess this floor would be a displacement, because it's using a blend texture, and when we walk over the sawdust, our footsteps actually make like a dirt walking sound. That's kind of neat. Alright, let's uh, get moving, but it seemed like this whole trail led here. And unless there's something just beyond it, well, I don't know where else to go. It's another dead end, and we'll have to go back and follow the road. Actually, if we think about it for a second, there's apparently an abandoned factory or power plant somewhere in here which led the town to be abandoned due to contamination. So, I'm thinking Mothman. I think there's like a 50-50 shot that there's a Mothman in here somewhere. And if we encounter him, uh... Christ, what do you even do? Light a match? Maybe that's what the candles are for. The people who came here first knew. Uh, there might be something up ahead. It looks like, well, there's a little shack, but I was going to say, it looks like the road sort of thins out. Oh, look. Actual light posts. This might actually be the town itself. A couple of little cabins. Wait, I, I got to get around and see this. It looks like these things remain powered as well. Ah, yes. An abandoned gas station? This was probably the main street. This will probably be the main spinal column that will allow us to go all the way to the end. Uh, what happened to this thing? I mean, there's leaving something to rot, and then there's... impact. It almost looks like something was thrown into the side. Which is exactly Mothman's M.O. Huh. Ooh. Okay. Not totally abandoned. They're using this to store materials from the cleanup. Apparently sorting different soils and maybe water. 
I think the I think the workshop page said that there's a lake which is uh com contaminated as well. These little houses kind of make me wonder what kind of town this was. Was it like some kind of lake resort type of town or did people actually live here? God, that's creepy. Wow. Oh, great. Not only is there an ominous chair, but an ominous teddy bear inside as well. Okay, we're doing this with the map. I didn't know there were going to be actual scares. Are you? Oh, just the thought that there was somebody just standing here around the corner. Sitting silently in the dark for who knows how long. Just waiting for someone to stumble onto that. Oh, man. I... See, there's a thing that happens with me where scares land a lot more when I don't think it's something that can happen, when I don't think it's something that a map would do. I came in here in exploration mode, not in horror map mode, and that was actually extremely frightening. Well... Now we get to do it again. Although here we come upon a spot where maybe the wiring in the walls is not quite as well upkept. That's blood. Okay, no, 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 no. There's something more than there's something more than spookiness going on here. That looks like fresh blood. This room is still laid out for someone to sleep in. I really expected there to be something here this time, and when my view was shifted by bumping into the wheelchair... Actually... This almost looks like someone might have been dragged from the wheelchair. We might be in the home of a victim. So far, we've been stalked in one house and seen evidence of maybe some recent violence in this one. Which leads me to wonder, did restoring power and bringing activity back here after it was silent except for the crickets for so long maybe awaken something? Something that grew to like the silence. Either something paranormal or even just some unhinged person who doesn't like being disturbed. We've had issues with two out of two houses so far, so I'm kinda not looking forward to the third. This one has blinds to peer through. I can't see much, but it looks like there's a light on the floor. Okay. This map is clearly indulging in some things that I really did not expect it to go for. This is starting to feel more like stalker or something. No, where's my flashlight? Come on.
This kind of makes me feel like maybe there's something more I can do here. Like there's some kind of puzzle to solve with these lights. All right, let's go. Forget this. Each one of these has been a different kind of horror show. It really is a North American zone. And look, if we approach now, we can see that green glow emanating from behind the blinds. Guarantee that won't be here when the crew shows up in the morning. Ah, but it would appear that we have located civilization. At least what passes for civilization here. Oh, a motel. Yeah, between this and those cabins up there, the knowledge that there's a lake which was apparently contaminated, I'm starting to think this is more of a vacation spot. But it would seem pretty much anywhere they can find is being used to store samples of contaminated soil. Well, let's do this. Locked. <laughs> Do I maybe not want to go in here? Is something calling this home? Maybe they're not using the building. Maybe they're just using the lot because surely this would have been something to note. I don't want to go in. You know what? Hang on. Hang on. This map is bright enough. I do not need a flashlight. I believe it is time for the return of the safety Glock. This is potentially the lair of the Mothman, and I will not stand for any sass from it. Why does this room have to be dark? Hang on. I do need the flashlight. I do need the flashlight. There's a room off to the side here, but... Oh, there's another door over there. You've been expecting me, huh? This is genuinely so uncomfortable. And they're storing barrels here as well. That makes very little sense. Don't know how you got him through the door. Unless something likes the taste of what's in this soil and has been bringing them inside. I'm still very much invested in the Mothman theory. Oh, and this door opens as well. There's another room. Oh my god. This soil breeds the perfect melon. You know, I'd be willing to bet, actually, that maybe we can climb this. Yes, we can, and we can get onto the roof. Oh, wow. Looks like a shipping container over there, probably part of the project as well. But man... After all that, I just can't feel alone in these woods. It definitely feels like... I don't know, the whole place just feels haunted in a way. Which is weird, because it's an event that probably didn't cause a lot of loss of life in the moment. It just seems like this whole place has been... touched in some way in the time since people left it. Like, at first, I was talking about a haunting or a serial killer or some kind of mutation caused by the contamination. But the vibe that this gives me, now that I've had time to look at a few things... Well, it reminds me a lot more of the game I played a while back called Anatomy. The idea of a place left to its own devices, a sentient place, going insane from isolation and it's presenting itself in different ways as we make our way through. Well, I am here to see what it has to offer, and 
That can't happen unless we continue to make our way down the road. That sort of looks like it's inviting me to travel in that direction. There's a weird clearing between the trees where it forms kind of a path. Then again, it also feels like it may be kind of a trap. I feel like I've crawled down the throat of some creature. Oh, this just leads us back to the mill. Alright, let's head back. Actually, now that I think about it, one of the themes of anatomy was that, just like a living organism, the different rooms of a house serve functions like on a body. This looks almost deliberate in how we can walk straight through the container and there's like a path formed through the trees. I don't know, that's definitely the angle that I'm starting to take here is the idea that maybe all locations are living And some of them just can't get used to being without people after they've already been there. Okay, with the level of illumination that the crews have brought in, I'm kind of starting to think that maybe this place freaks them out too. I mean, they're getting really, really paranoid with this stuff. Ah, more storage for what looks like electrical equipment, but then again, is that maybe like a Geiger counter? There was a radiation s uh, symbol out here. I have a feeling if I were to switch a Geiger counter on, I would not like what I hear right now. I can't help but notice just how silent it's gotten. I can't hear anything but a very low, almost imperceptible rumble. The kind of rumble that makes it feel like something is staring me down from within the fog in the trees. I have to say, though, this loft is quite nice looking. I mean, imagine pulling up a chair and just sitting here. Falling asleep, staring into the darkness? Unfortunately, I think if we're to find any more, we're going to have to walk into the darkness, abandoning the safety of our skylights. There doesn't seem to be any more here, so I guess I'll just head back and see how far the street goes in the other direction. But I don't think it'll be all that far. I just got actual chills coming back this way and seeing that unassuming door with a lone light sitting above it. Like, knowing what that door is. Uh, just absolute heebie-jeebies. Well, I guess we don't know what that door is. All we know is that something is apparently contained within. Actually... Can we maybe... If there's a back window, can we see inside? Oh, well, maybe we can. Nothing but a... Actually really horribly stained bed. What a horrible time to hear something crunching behind me. Can we actually crouch jump through? Oh, we can. It's almost like whatever made that noise was sat in that chair. I'll be honest, it might be considered an overused horror cliché, but I love the trope of the sound from behind the door, because it allows you to conjure an image in your own mind of just what that something might be. Especially when you get here later and nothing is here, and you wonder what 
only moments ago occupied the same space we're now in. That's a blood stain. I didn't notice that before. Actually, now that I think about it, whatever it was was probably going out the back while I was in front. It, I thought that it would have to go through the door to get to me, but it actually could have snuck up on me at any time. I suppose it still could. Thinking back now to how watched I feel from these woods... Oh, great. I hadn't noticed, but it appears that there is one more cabin. No blinds on this one, at least, giving us a clear view inside. Uh, but this one appears to be the most dilapidated yet. It's gonna happen. It always happens when we enter here. Nothing but some strange sounds. Okay, the most overtly scary one is the one that's fine. Okie dokie. And here looks to be where they're storing a lot of the outgoing material. But, as with all others, the way is sealed. Actually, if the fence was down, like, further up that way and to the right, shouldn't there be... Yeah, why is there a fence here? Unless the map is more L-shaped. Oh, it's so hard to see with this... Oh, no! This must be the lake, and I bet that building silhouetted against the sky... I bet that's the plant that caused all this. But I kind of doubt we'll be able to get in there. Yep, we make our way back to the road. Oh, wait. The fallen tree from earlier! This is probably not actually an invisible wall. I had assumed it would be. No, we legitimately can get over here. That is so cool. All right. Yeah, it seems like this bridge actually isn't being used by the project. This is all still legitimately abandoned. Of course, I have no idea how they're going to go about decontaminating all this. All I know is that I probably shouldn't be dipping my toes in there. Look. This section of road is less crumbled, but... Still, there's almost full trees starting to grow up through it. What do we have over here? Ah. Uh, this is probably the plant. But, judging by the low-res textures, I imagine this isn't going to be something we can access. Now, I know I said I wouldn't be dipping my toes in, but it wouldn't be much of an explore if I didn't, now would it? Okay, gone through the whole map, and it doesn't seem like there was much in the lake. But if we come over here, we find the old power plant, or at least substation. Well, I've done a little bit more running around in the woods with my flashlight, really earning my Alan Wake player model, and done a no-clip run, and I'm pretty sure this is about all there is to see. So that was GM Canada Forest, or just Canada, and this was really cool. I mean, I think the best thing about it is the premise and the story that goes alongside it. The idea that this is a ghost town in the truest sense, because it's a town that's sort of been given artificial life. It's now lit once more after a period of long silence. And the scares in this come 
really not from what may be inhabiting this abandoned space, but the feeling that the space itself is somehow aware. That the space doesn't want to be disturbed like this. All over, we have signs of the cleanup that's taking place, and so you have those overlapping layers of history where you have the abandoned town, you have things that were left behind during the evacuation, and now you have things left behind by the crews who are apparently having difficulty cleaning this place up. And you get sort of the impression, through the way things are left about, that maybe they're experiencing some of the things we are as well. But it actually wasn't as large as I was expecting. I mean, this map is almost a gig in size. So I think a lot of it probably has to do with all the custom content that's been packed. While I do think the scares are maybe a little bit dense, like they are in most of the structures on the map, I have to say, I, I can't say they don't land effectively. Oh, this is such a weird map, but it's so unique and so different from what I was expecting. And I really appreciate the creativity that went into this. Not to mention, I really love the sort of resort town theming of this. We have this cool looking sort of modern design in the motel because this place I believe was only meant to have been abandoned in 1991. And it really reflects that style all over. You've got the cabins over there. I don't know, it just feels really cool. I think that's the main takeaway. I wish there was more to it because it's got such a unique style, both in terms of the location itself and in how it chooses to present its scares. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.